Assalamu alaikum, good afternoon listeners, it's me Suleiman Ben Suarez, coming back on Facebook Live. Today is Monday the 38th of May 2022, time has just gone about 8 minutes past 3 in the afternoon in Birmingham, England. Um, give me a minute, let's share the video and um, we can start the program. Okay, thank you very much. Um, yes, it's uh, 38th of May 2022. This time has just gone uh, nine minutes past three in the afternoon in Birmingham, England. Assalamu alaikum. The program is about uh, a brief response to the misguided and, and misleading statement by King Kohli. Uh, King Kohli, uh, for po those who don't know, he's the head of the traffic division um, in the Gambia, police traffic division in the Gambia. I don't know what his rank is. But the importance of this um, program and the reason why to respond to him, which I would, I would um, get into later in this program. But I have to lay this thing to be very, uh, people to be very careful because of the comments. The reason I even have to come out is the comments that follow King Kohli. Um, and the comments can show how much divided we are becoming. And I'm disappointed people who can write statements would be falling for a misguided statement like this. And we have to be very careful to go with our sentiments and to open up our eyes and think thoroughly when we hear something to differentiate what the statement stands for and the validity of that statement and what good it's that statement is to the public. Because the statement is completely misguided and is completely misleading and have a potential to divide us further and in fact to cause a, con uh, uh, a, a, a tribal conflict in the country. That's how dangerous it is and I am I'm surprised that the journalists uh, in the Gambia, I'm surprised politicians in the Gambia, I'm surprised civil society in the Gambia are not addressing this issue. And King Kohli's position should not be attainable. I have seen people come and say, oh, King Kohli have said the truth, or King Kohli has said this, or foreigners should not have driving license, this and that. That's cheap. But I want us to think properly, and I'll, I'll make my case here, for Gambians to think properly. And this is not started with King Kohli. That's why we should be very careful. And if we, I will play King Kohli's message, is in Mandinka, and I will interpret it in Wolof. For the Wolof list, uh, who, for those who, uh, uh, sorry, I can uh, interpret it in English for, for the general listening to understand what he said and make up their mind. But it didn't start from King Kohli. This is the similar statement Ahmad Baha has made. This is after the elections. After the elections. Before the elections, it was a different ball game. People like me, I came out. I came out and warning people to be careful. Telling people to tell non-Gambians not to take part in our elections. Telling non-Gambians, if they want to be Gambians, let them follow the proper route. The Ahmad Ba and others went out campaigning. The NPP went out campaigning. 
and calling some of us calling me that I hate my own tribe. Yes, I got private messages insulting me. I hate myself. I hate my tribe for speaking against something illegal. I don't see tribe when I look at myself. I don't see tribe when I look at myself. I am a Gambian. And I am comfortable with that. When Ahmad Ba and others went round talking about, I mean, and, and, and making people, and I said this, let no Gambian be quiet. Let them label you as xenophobic, let them label you uh, 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 whatever. That is to stop you from stopping the wrong thing they're doing. The police were in that country. We did not see the police do their job. Immigration were in the country. We don't see the immigration do their job. They facilitate it. That's why we have almost a million voters. That's why we have a million voters. Other people, because of they are against the UDP, thinking that it's UDP to win. It's they, put, they, they look the other way and, and in fact, took part in that campaign and, and allow the NPP to, to go around the country to, to allow any every Tom Dick and Harry to, 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 to register as a as a Gambian. I don't have any problem with any citizen, any person for that matter, human being, to go through the right channels and, uh, and, 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 and naturalize as a Gambian. What I am against is the illegal way of doing things. Because I said this is going to create a problem in that country. It's going to undermine our democracy, but again, it's going to fracture the coexistence between communities. After the elections, the same hypocrites that went round to campaign for this, uh, for, for immigrants to get uh, their nationalities. Ahmad Bas started it to say that they're going to build bakeries or they're going to train Gambians and, and take the, uh, and take the uh, bakery industry away from, from non-Gambians. Uh, I'm not even sure whether he went to the extent to say that you take it from the polo voters or whatever. But we know who he was referring to if he did not even mention the polo voters. Ahmad Bas did that. We went on, a minister was appointed. Yes, he's not fit. What one thing he said was true. It's only in Barrow's government, someone like him will become a minister. Only in Barrow's government, someone like uh, um, I mean, the people he named will become ministers or become presidential advisors. That's the only thing that is true. But it's not true that it's only Barrow's government, a fuller will become a minister. Because fullers have been ministers from, for, for, because they are part of that country. They are not strangers in that country. They are part of the fabric of that country. The second, uh, the, the second vice president in that country was a fuller, and he became a vice president twice in the uh, Jawar administration under Skamara. And he did not become a vice president because he was a fuller? No. Because he was a patriotic citizen. That, 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 that contributed and have the capacity to serve his country and he served his country as a vice president. Twice. We have different ministers, be it finance, be it uh, agriculture, be it uh, health. There's no other, there's no ministry in there that have not been probably manned by a fuller. But that's not the case here. They happen to be, they happen to be fullers. Why they man those position is because they're Gambians, they are, uh, they're part of the political party that, that, that is in government and they have the capacity to serve. This was the reason. But in this battle government, in their tribal game of dividing us, they, they, this person stood in a, in a, in a I mean, congregation of, of, of whatever they said that they, they're celebrating their culture. To say that the reason uh, they uh, full of support Baro is because of Baro make Gainako's ministers. The same government said that. Now we have a member, uh, a public officer. That's why I said the reason I'm, I'm going to react to this is King Koli is a public officer, is a public servant. He should be very measured when he addressed issues. He very measured when he talked on policy. And that I will leave to, uh, for later.
Let's make this case. Let me give an example. I want to give a context to this discussion. Because this, the context is not, uh, the, 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 the issue is wider than what King Kohli have done. The, the problem with King Kohli is he make it a tribe and a particular tribe he targeted. A particular tribe he targeted. And this is very dangerous. This is very dangerous. And not only King Kohli, but the people I see commenting. And look at the show names of people commenting. This is showing the seeds have already been put in the soil. They are commenting based on sentiments. And those sentiments are anti -fullers. And that is very, it's a disgrace for young people to not have the right mindset, to fall for, for, fall for, fall for corrupt officers, fall for corrupt politicians, to continue to divide us. But this is the story of Africa. This is the story of Africa. We are always distracted. I said, don't allow them to distract us. Don't allow them to hit our heads together. They are the criminals. They are the ones creating the problems. It's not the foreigners. The foreigners are there for green of pastures. Yes, they have a responsibility. That's why I advise. Don't take part in illegal act. Don't take part in undermining our democracy because of it will have a repercussion. And your the coexistence would be uh, uh, would be a problem. Let's start to give a context to this. If people can remember, let's look at the case of South Africa. But even before South Africa is very popular, that's why I'm going to refer to South Africa. But I will rem remind people that in the in the six in the seventies in the eighties. 60s, 70s, 80s, both Ghana and Nigeria have this problem. And even two years ago, there's a problem between Ghana and Nigeria for this foreign foreigner issue. Because of the politicians will fail. But politicians will fail the economy. Politicians will fail to make a make a um, have policies that that empower the people, that that create jobs for the youths. And what they do is turn around and pick on foreigners. Turn around to pick on foreigners, to pitch them against their own people. Whilst those politicians, their sons and daughters become multimillionaires and uh, nephew and niece become multimillionaires go and find out baros nephews now amadou sane njaga sane and others they are multimillionaires in this town before baro came to power they were jobless or do it if they have a job they were doing nothing absolutely that's worthwhile today they are multimillionaires how can amadou sane and njaga sane become multimillionaires and others not only them go and check the family of as uh, amadba Go and look at the house Ahmadba was living before coming to power and look at the family of Ahmadba today. The sons and daughters are in positions to make millions. What about the average Gambian youths are not? They call them lazy. They call them every name. And the same people will turn around to want us to fight the foreigners as foreigners are creating our problems. No, it's them that drop our money. It's them that fail to invest in uh, where they need to invest the money that they created the problem. This happened in the time of Sagari. This happened in the time of many... Uh, and why did I choose Sagari? Sagari was a civilian president, democratic elected. When, when Ghanaians were explo uh, 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 driven out of um, Nigeria, hardworking Ghanaians, and the same thing happened to Nigerians in Ghana. And it, it happened before and before. Did Ghana get better for that? Did Nigeria get better for that? No. We should not fall for that. But the recent one people can remember is South Africa. Everybody knew how much Africans fought for South Africa. Without Africans fighting for South Africa, South Africa would not have been liberated. From the guerrilla camps, within around South Africa, Sadak, for the refugees, their leaders, been refugees in Gambia itself. Some of you might not know that. South Africa freedom fighters uh, leader from Swapo, I mean, to every, this thing, had, had their members in the Gambia then, in the 70s. 
the, the residents in the Gambia, they were given refuge in the, refuge in the Gambia. They were supported from the Gambia. In, in Nigeria, training camps, every Ghana and everywhere else. In Libya, in, in Algeria, everywhere else there were training camps to fight the apartheid regime. But the minute this, this ANC came to power, what did they do? They brought about so-called policies to say that so that the economy can be balanced. For Africans, uh, uh, South African, black South Africans can have share of the economy. It was a lie. It was to empower the senior members of the ANC. And overnight, the president today is a billionaire. Overnight, they become millionaires, billionaires, and their families become millionaires, billionaires. But the average South African suffer and continue to suffer the same way they suffered all under the white people. Even worse today. Now, for the Africans that went into South Africa with skills, some without skills, but what when you can even call them school with the the the, 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 the right um, kind of characters, the values to work hard to do something, and when to be part of that. Guess what? They started to pitch. When things become difficult, the minister won't do it, but there will be some officers, uh, public officers there, start to say that, oh yeah, because of the jobs are taken by Africans. Or subs are been run by Africans in the uh, shanty towns. The subs, this thing, they are not, this is, this is because of Africans coming to take your jobs. Because African this, African become this, African become criminal. And now, this frustration of the youths in South Africa, what they do? They go and attack Africans. But for the Indians, for the whites, and all the colors that come in and to share the criminal corruption in that country, the a family called the Guptas, the Guptas came to South Africa when South Africa was already liberated. They are not even born South Africans, Indians, no. The Guptas came from uh, um, um, India, broke, come with nothing to South Africa. They started to open a so-called IT shop. Guess what? They went through the wife of, 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 uh, uh, of the then president. Next minute, the Gupta become multi-millionaires in South Africa. Billionaires. They own airlines. They own everything. The Guptas. Even today, they are investigating the Guptas. They ha have access to contract for arm deals and everything else. But no. Those people were not targeted. Indians were not targeted. And all those people were not targeted. Who were targeted? Africans who were opening shops, I mean, to, to within the community, who were supporting the community. Africans who were doing enterprise and other things were affected. They were attacked. They were killed. They were uh, shot uh, on fire. Africa hating on Africans. Because of the politician program a mindset for us to go and attack each other. Not, not to attack them, not to go to their, their homes and go and attack their families for what they put on you. That's why when I get to King Kole, we'll ask ourselves who sent King Kole to say what it said. Why King Kole did not say that for five years? Why did he wait for after the elections? Why King Kole did not say these things before elections? Why King Kole was not there to, to protect the voter card? Why King Kole did not protect uh, the issuing of, uh, 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 of driving license? And he is the most corrupt officer you can ever fight, find. Esquire, if someone like that can be commanding traffic, that's why we have a problem. But today, some people don't want to see it because King Kole is their tribe, thinking that King Kole is the champion in them. I said to you, Gambia, there's no person who can champion a tribe. They champion a system. These are the same people, the, the, the same people, Manding Kess, who stood and, and champion Baro, Fulas, who stood champion Baro, Wolof, who stood champion Baro. And dollars and everything. It's us that champion the corruption. It's us that champion the misrule. There's no person who champion for one tribe. They champion a system. They champion Barra's government because Barra's government is doing what they want for them. Them, them, them. They are not doing it for the fullers or dollars or mandinkas or nobody else. For their own families. The both by force came out. He's a pure mandinka and said that they did it as a strategy. Didn't Gambia not hear that? Did Gambia not hear that? But let me give you a similarity of Gambia and South Africa. That's why we should open our eyes. 
and see what is going on. Now, the this is what happened. Now, imagine in the Gambia. Now we're talking about taxi drivers. Why? Why taxi drivers very important? That's what we want our brothers and sisters to be only taxi, taxi drivers. We don't want our brothers and sisters to run companies, our brothers and sisters to run business, our brothers and sisters to run farms that are one kilometer uh, wide. You know that recently in Fony they took a farm um, land that almost one kilometer and give it to an Indian who, who just turned around now to naturalize as a Gambian. You think that Indian believed to be a Gambian? You think that Indian would bother about Gambia? You think that Indian would stay in the Gambia if Gambia was to burn down? And you think that investment is doing in Gambia is going to stay in the Gambia? Go and look at the properties. Go and look at the shops. They, look at the properties they buy. Look at the, the people that sell for them. They, those people, we are not attacking. I'm not asking anybody to attack them. I'm not asking anybody to attack them. But I'm just trying to get our mindset that that's not our problem. I'll tell you what our problem is and what the solution should be. Why taxi drivers? We'll get to that. Now, let's, let me tell you something. What we should do is not to attack each other. But what we should do is not to attack any foreigner. That's not a solution. Our solution to attack our own people who are doing the wrong thing. And if I mean attack, I mean to hold them accountable. Let, it, let them not distract us to hit each, fight each other. Let, let us hold them accountable. Those who are trying to divide us among tribes, try to divide us among different nations. They went to the extent to say that, oh, pan-Africanism. Pan they made the statement to say that, why well, Gambians, yeah, you people are in, in Europe, you are voting. And you don't want Africans to vote here. They made that statement. We were here. They made that statement. They said, yeah, Gambians are voting in Europe. America, you people vote in Europe and America, but you don't want people to vote in this country. They made that statement. Now, do we understand that countries advance their people? Countries advance their citizens. That's what Gambia government should do. Gambia government should find way to advance their citizens, but they are not doing that. They are advancing their own family, using per diem, using every kind of trick to, to be wealthy. Anybody appointed, next minute they will be wealthy. But what about the people? They, they use these youths, call them youth movement, call them anything to run around them, to be there, to be there, to be insulting for them, to doing things for them, because of elections is due. After elections, they don't have need for them. Now they want them to be engaged in fighting each other, uh, fighting other, uh, the, 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 the immigrants for them. Let me tell you the program China, uh, India have. Under, Man, uh, Mag um, uh, under Singh, their Prime Minister Singh, the Congress Party, they have the uh, economic development strategy because they are, they are competing with China. This is what, what you call the dragon and the tiger economy. But it's not only about economy, it's about geostrategic uh, uh, control. Because they are, are technically at war, India and China. Now, when the in Chinese have their road belt nonsense in, uh, initiative, so that global countries can, can, can be into that, uh, I mean, uh, India got, got their own strategy. And part of that strategy is what? empowering their citizens to get hold of strategic position in, in different uh, uh, geopolitical areas, be in within the Middle East, be in within Africa and other places. Now, one of these things is they give loans to their citizens. Before they give them loan, they come to the Gambia. Let, let me just put it to Gambia. They, come, they came to the Gambia. When they came to the Gambia, they said to the Gambia, we can support you, we can help you with your economy. Now, we will give you loans, and these loans will come with interest. But in order to give these loans, we have to uh, uh, draw an agreement. Agreement, things like taxation agreements and other, I mean, I mean the sort of agreements they have to sign in a bilateral agreement. And then we'll give you the loans. Then we go, loans we give you would be for this, for that, for that. Construction, that's how the House of Parliament came about. Okay, you want a House of Parliament, uh, to build your house of parliament will give you the loan, but we are going to build the house of parliament. Indians, we will build the house of parliament. They will bring their 
Even laborers, they, they bring some of their laborers. They take few Gambian laborers, but even laborers, they have to import it from, from India. Creating jobs for Indians, taking the money that they bring to invest in the Gambia, would not stay in the Gambia. Why can't Gambia take the loan and give it to the, 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 the contractors we have? No. They go come and do the contract. Imagine from $30 million, the, uh, the loan went to $55 million. That's without interest. That House of Parliament, you see, we are paying fortune for that. It was not a gift. But for us, for us to have that loan with interest, we have to open up, up, up our relationship, our markets. Now, for Indian citizens to come and easily get into our markets, to import. Uh, and the importation is this, uh, taxation arrangements. They, we likely more import than export. We export casino and we export something that they're going to finish up. Even casino why should we export casino uh, to, uh, to Indians and Indians would do the, do the uh, finish it up and, and sell it? We cannot even make sure we do the value chain in the Gambia to make sure the finished product is exported to India or, or to India. I take it, they're not going to consume it there. They, they will do the value product in India and send it back to England and other places. Make more money. But that's what Gamb Gambian, Gambian technocrats, Gambian politicians would agree on. Because of we are lazy. They are lazy. They don't think. And all they want is, yes, so they can travel to India time to time to sign bilateral, sign things, and they get them. That's enough for them. Or oh, some of part of the contract, they can have their corruption in it. That's all they think about. Now, once India have their foot in there, with that, now there's another component. Now, their old citizens will be given loan by the same bank that gave us loan to build the Exim Bank of India. Go and suicide this. To, to this thing. And they will start to send Indians to come and sell their own products. Or products associated with companies, the, uh, Indian companies or Indian investments. You might see a company which is not Indian, but I'll tell you, if you look at the investors behind the company are Indians. Recently in the United Kingdom, our finance minister, wife, we find out that they own a company in Russia. An Indian owner company in Russia, but the company is Russian. But the amount of investment they have in there is, is technically their own company. This is how they do. Now, the fridge, the fan, anything they sell in the shop technically is to support the Indian economy. But it's again creating an Indian millionaire and an Indian billionaire in Africa and in the Gambia. And if you create 10 millionaires or 1 billionaire, 2 billionaires in Gambia and they hold strategic assets, they have control over our government, the, how the government think and decisions the government take. So that they can compete with China, they can compete with America, they can compete with other countries. And Gambia will be a product, not a sovereign nation. Now, go and look at this. Go and find out this, those in the Gambia. Go and look at most of them would, would have in the, uh, the Hindu, Hindu uh, string around them. When the Congress, when the Congress party was on, it went kind of balanced. But the, the Hindu nationalists, the minute they came in, they used their Hindu nationalists. These are Hindu nationalists who hate Muslims. Hindu nationalists. That's more, more, more of them that, that came out of India to Africa and especially Gambia. Go and look at most of them in the Gambia. You see their, uh, their, 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 their districts. You hardly see a Sikh. You hardly see a Muslim Indian. All what you see is Hindus. The Hindu nationalists are taking this strategy, I mean, to, to, to take over countries. Because they are part of what is going to sponsor the party. They are Hindu nationalist party in, in uh, the BJP. They call them the BJP in India. Gambia become a product. Turkey. Turkey is doing the same arrangement. That's why today go and look at the export, import from Turkey. They create an, for their economy. China, we all know, is doing the same thing. Now, how do you expect Gambians to compete? How do you expect Gambian businesses to compete? The Gambian government it doesn't do anything, technically. What we started doing in the First Republic, when we have the Gambia Commercial Bank, when, when we have the IBAS, IBAS was a kind of organization that helped Gambians, indigenous Gambians, to go into business enterprise, to, to help them to prepare their business plan, to help them to access finance, to help them to, to run a business. Where are all those ideas? That's what, what Gambia government had before. We have another thing we'll call the Gambia Agriculture Development Bank. 
in order to support Gambians into agricultural de 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 development. All those things left because of uh, everything got bankrupt because of they share all the proceeds with their own families and party supporters. That's what the governments have been doing us people. We don't blame that to the foreigners. We blame that to our the governments. If governments want to make the country work, they should bring in policy that will enable Gambians to work. But they will tell you, no, Gambians then lazy, and Gambians this themselves will complete. That's a lie. Gambians are not lazy. It's a lie. Some Gambians are lazy. You think the Gambian youths taking the back way are lazy? You think they are taking the back way for fun? You didn't think they're taking the back way because of they want to be someone, they want to be something? How many Gambian youths perished in the back way? But how many Gambian youths too are today productive uh, from the back way? At different level. They meet their potential. Some of them, their potential was, was sports, football. Look at them today. Some of them, are they, they, they are artisans. Look at them today. Go and look at designers, Gambian designers who took the back way and other things. Yes, some Gambians who are traumatized in the back way. That's why we don't encourage the back way. Who got traumatized? Either you perish or some got traumatized in the back way. And now today they are mentally not, not okay. They are addicted to substance and, or everything else because of what they went through. That's why we don't encourage the back way. But they, they are taking the chance because, look, there's no hope where they are. It's not, if anyone has hope in that country, I'll tell you, you will not take the back way. If any minister's daughter or son will not take the back way. People who, who feel desperate and want to be something took that risk. Then the laziness is not true. Look at how many Gambians today went into agriculture. Look at how many Gambians women have been into agriculture. What support did they have? Even to have water, most of the boreholes now are sponsored by Gambians. In the Gambia and the Gambians in the diaspora. Most of fencing is supported by Gambians or uh, these things. Where is the ga money from government? If they do everything and even harvest, they cannot sell their products. Because of what? There's no strategy to help them preserve, to, to add value or, or to market. You think people just go and work for nothing? You think someone can do everything for themselves? You can. You you have to do everything and produce and and and, and uh, device a storage, device uh, marketing, and everything it work without enabling government interventions. Do you know how much subsidy farmers get in this country in order for us to have able to buy food cheap? They subsidize it for nothing. M milk is cheaper than water. Milk is cheaper than water because of the subsidy on milk. Milk is cheaper than water. Go and check the liter of milk and water. And we still have water, drinkable water in our taps. But still now water is more expensive. But the milk is subsidized because people need milk. They need the calcium. That's what government do. This is where we should attack government. We should go after government, not the foreigners. Foreigners are not the one uh, uh, in charge of policies. What we do is advise foreigners not to fracture our relationship, not to fracture our coexistence. In the sixties, where before I was born, my father had the vehicle. Vehicles actually private vehicle. The driver, his driver, there's no skills. Drivers then, his driver has to be taken from Kaula in Senegal. A gentleman then called by them, a young chap. He became part of our family. Today he has his family in the Gambia. By them was like the firstborn of my father. He was my father's driver. This is not something new. This is not something new. Countries will have to interdepend. What you do is make sure your citizens can compete or your citizens have an advantage. You cannot stop other con people coming to work in your country. You cannot. What you do is make it possible for your people to get the skills, in fact, to take the jobs, to have an advantage over them. We have an open market policy. We cannot sanction people like that. But we'll get to that. But we ask ourselves, where are the job creation policies? Where are the enable environmental Gambian to, to, to skill up and do other things? None. None. 
Where did they invest our money? Where do they invest money? Why do they spend that money at State House? Why that money is not spent at, uh, in, um, in, in, uh, to the people? 20 million dollars. Already, uh, oh, probably over 20 million dollars for gum petroleum is gonna go in, in the bin because of they cannot prosecute two people for, for the crime that other, others have committed. Because they know that, but they want just to say that they prosecute. Because Ben Suarez and others are online always saying that nobody is prosecuted. Now they just want to forsake of that prosecute. But how many, how many corruption cases, how many billions that could have spent on Gambians? How many billions that could have spent on Gambian youths to create jobs? How many Gambian youths are, 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 are still up but could not access the market they need to access? Are producing, they cannot access market. This is where our, our debate should be. This is where we should attack. Now, let's come to King Kole. I will play the video. I will play the video. It's in Mandinka. And I'll try and... Let me... I'll try to interpret, uh, interpret it in, um, in, in, in English for people to understand. I understand the sentiments that some people have. But that's why I want to address this thing. Let them be careful. Let us not use sentiments on this. I know that most of us are angry because the way the elections went, we knew where the problem is. We all that. But we cannot think of that this is, this is no, this is not a solution. They are distracting us more. They want us to find more. If election comes again, it's as if this thing never even been a case. Now we'll get to that. That's why I said, this is not between Mandinkas and Fulas. We should not allow this to, to be the narrative. Because if we listen to this thing, you can hear that King, King, King Koli directly picked on Fulas. We have Cerulean taxi drivers. We have, I mean, Wolof taxi drivers who are not Gambians. We have Nigerians who are not Gambian taxi drivers. We have even Mauritanians who are not drivers, taxi drivers. We have Guinea-Bissau who are not Gambian taxi drivers. We have Malians who are not uh, full of taxi drivers. We can go on. Every country in that distance are there. Why then keep on emphasizing on full as full as are the problem? This is going to create this is going to create a bigger problem if we don't arrest this. But it's a shame that we have journalists in that country. They will not pick up this, uh, this, this abuse. We have I mean, politicians who will not uh, speak on, on, on to this. Or rather, they are the one enabling this. Let me play these things and uh, hear it from the horse's mouth. Let's just take the first thing he said. King Cole started to say, or the recording started from, jobs, jobs are not available, but jobs are, are taken and given to foreigners. Only it only happened in Gambia, and Gambians are not nice to each other, and they will go against each other, and and taking taking their properties, their taxes, and give it to non-Gambians. And this the law doesn't allow. And you have Momo Dijalo here. That's why you stop, but we'll, 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 we'll take it from there on. Now, jobs are not available. Is it tax driving only the only job Gambians could, should do or could do? Why did government, what did government do to enable Gambians to become taxi drivers, even if they think that's very essential for them to do? What did they do? I'll tell you what they could do. One, 
They are now saying to Gambians that you Gambians will take vehicles and give it to foreigners. The Gambians that take vehicles and give it to foreigners, they did not give the vehicles because of the persons of foreigners. That Gambian have, might have reasons to do that. You see, I'll tell you what foreigners do. Just as when we come to this country, we allow to do certain things that someone born in this country would not do. We allow to, to, to accept certain conditions someone born in this country would not do. That's why wherever you go, foreigners would do better in, in many aspects because of their drive. What makes them to travel the, from one country to another or one continent to another, it's there. You'll be surprised what, what people started doing here before they comfortable to acquire or do things or how they live. They sleep on the floor. Gambians who would have never have slept in the floor. If you tell them, okay, you have to go to Basse and, and start from there. They will never go to Basse to, to even be uncomfortable. No. But a Sierra Leonean, Guinean, Malian, anybody, they might. And they might not even do that in their own country. But they'll come to Gambia and accept it. Go and see in Mauritania and other places that Gambians who go and allow certain conditions because they want to put a foot there because they want to move on to some, somewhere else. They accept it, but they will not accept it in Gambia. Now, if a Gambian give a taxi to a person, probably that foreigner have come around, be learned to drive a vehicle, probably not even very well, but impress this Gambian to be a trustworthy person, started to do chores or run around helping him in the house doing things and they even become part of the family that's how they okay now hotel vehicle or they have a taxi and then call your ibrahim and then call your modu then call your whatever it is fakeba uh living because of they have a relation that gambian have a nephew have a niece or have some um, uh, brother but they will not give it to the brother now how do you blame the foreigner for that oh why why, why this now, the other thing is, the CSA Gambian law, I'll tell you this law must have come during the Gambia. This law was not in existence. And if it is a law, I doubt if, if, if it's a law, I doubt whether it's been passed in the House of Parliament. Whether it's, it's a sort of a policy, a directive or whatever, but I don't think it's a law. I have to check on this because I spoke to a senior police officer, he said, no, I don't think it's a law. But I still didn't have the answer. But someone who listened to this program might have an answer and tell us definitely what law, what section of the law said this. When was it passed in Parliament? He said Gambian law said this, not King Cole said this. But before that, we have to ask ourselves first. I just, uh, I even before playing, go back to that. Let me say this. King Cole is a public officer. It's wrong for him as a police officer to go and address a gathering. That gathering is wrong. Who are they? Who are the audience? Who are the audience? Did he go and talk to the driver's union? Was he with the driver's union? No. It's just sitting down. We can see the people around there. That doesn't constitute the driver's union. Who are those stakeholders? He is trying to disturb members of public. Now, if the, some of the youths out there just move away from there and just go and attack a shop, a, a, a fuller shop, a Mauritanian shop, a, a Indian shop, or any other shop, and to justify their anger for what they have had there. Because that's what he did. He made statements that would make a Gambian citizen angry. That's why some Gambian citizens are angry on, 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 on Facebook, writing things that, that are against a tribe, rather than looking at policy issues and see the roots, root of the problems, allowing to be divided, allowing to be, to be, to be enraged in order to attack the wrong uh, people. The audience, who the audience is? He's a public officer. He should be very guided on statement he makes. This some ordinary citizens even should be, especially someone who is a public officer. But as he is the vanguard, as he's this, let him go and talk to his officers who issue the license, officers who issue the papers for these people to become Gambians. No. And who sent Koli to do this? Because. This statement just came out, but for days, they have been stopping vehicles, parking them. Then the policy must have come from up. What informed this policy? The interior minister needed to be questioned about this. Why for five years? We haven't had anything about this. Gambian didn't even know. Gambian didn't even know. 
All I know that in the private sector, in the private sector, any person who has the residence, right residence in the Gambia, have a right to access the private sector. Now, it de determine whatever you're going to do to the private sector, whether you have met the criteria to do. If it is a driving driver, you have to access to make sure you have your driver license and other things. If it is chemical engineering, you have to get the qualification to be a chemical engineer. But most of these laws or whatever they call them policies are something generated in re reaction to certain things that have happened. But they are not sound policies. They are very divisive. Now, let's move on. Let's continue with King Colin. <laughs> Again, he said, Momo Diallo would be a Guinean. Momo Diallo would be a Guinean who, who would be in somewhere in Basel or somewhere and have a, vehicle, have a shop and then have a vehicle. And rather than take the vehicle to give it to a Gambian, he said, Momo Diallo would call his brother or this thing from, from Guinea and give it to a vehicle, said Dawala. And that brother will come in, Momo Diallo will take the brother to an Alcalo and Alcalo will make it as. Uh, attestation or whatever it is and they go and give him the license now if even that's true that's Mohamed Yal, a businessman looking after his interest now he's allowed to break a law because of the system allowing to break a law because if the Mohamed Yal have that audacity probably Mohamed Yal himself has his residence in the country in the wrong manner for the same uh, same purposes because of the system allow it because of their election when they want to go for elections they, they disregard anything that's interest to the nation they want to have the interest of the person they they follow in that's the president just as they did for Yaya Jame, they, they they are doing for Adam Bar. now they allow this person to go and just have the papers that's simple from the alcalos and others if that is true that's what they did but for his public officers going to the public telling them this or, or trying to galvanize them for this what purpose what is he trying to what is he trying to justify if you go to people uh, and tell them this what are you trying to get out of them did you did he go and address to the, to the seniors did he address this to the drivers did he go and local government of uh, ministry to tell them the alcalos needs to stop this we need to do that no he is picking the lowest hanging fruit. He is picking the, the most dis, uh, disadvantaged to try to get them to to fight among each other. This is what will enrage Gambian youths and, and Gambians who are suffering today and think their suffering is caused by uh, the, the um, caused by the foreigners rather than the suffering is caused by government. Now, in order for them to go take the streets to to to, to, to demonstrate against government, they'll take the streets to to attack foreigners. This is what it they're trying to uh, trying to gain from this because I didn't see anything else they're going to gain. Now that Momo Diallo that have a shop that decided even to bring his brother or whatever, if the systems were followed, Momo Diallo would make sure that that brother have to follow the systems to get a uh, before driving, or Momo Diallo would not even been incentivized to do that. Now let's look at it. Now if driving is very important driving sector or private driving is very important what have the government do did in order to regulate re regulate that industry we know that anybody can walk in and get a license most some, some part of the accident is even gambian citizens who cannot drive are driving because they just went and get a license because they bribe or they know someone but then this is not unique to foreigners if somebody said because of all the accidents they have to do something some people are saying oh because i've said they have to do something but it's not the foreigners causing the accidents they, they the drivers are causing accidents some of them are gambians some are foreigners now if it is job to say that in the uh, driving oh is taken over by and you sneak job what did the government do why can the government have an initiative i'll give an example my input into the security sector reforms. That's why whenever I uh, attack the security sector reform, I say it's lack of imagination. By now, five years, some aspect of the security sector reforms should have been, we should have seen tangible results. 
that would have win the confidence of the public because that's one thing that we need to win. The security in, um, sector have to win the confidence of the uh, people. The government could have used this part of the security sector reforms, be the army, to have a training ground for drivers. The army logistics, motor transport and logistics, to have an area that vehicle people can be, I mean, be soldiers, be Gambian citizens, can go and train to drive. Drive professional, to drive different form of vehicles, be from small to, to the biggest kind of complex vehicle. Even to, 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 to drive constructions, I mean, I mean kind of, of equipment or, or, or vehicles. That should have been an initiative. Look at then the job where real money is. Taxi driving, apart from stealing the money, there's no money in it. Most taxi drivers, the reason they do it, they, can, they have control over the money. They can do whatever what they want. But there's no money in it. And it's very something that very difficult you have to work extremely hard but things like tankers to driving tankers driving these sophisticated vehicles discharging stuff and like that this is where the money is and if you have the the, the qualifications the professional qualifications you can travel when you travel to anywhere in the in this world you have a good job in europe you have a good job it's a good job here it's well paid job here salary is starting for forty thousand pounds Far more than graduates start from 13,000, 14,000. 40 these things are going on. Intercontinental drivers, any di different drivers. Did we have Gambians who have the skills? This is something we should think of. In, I am in um, people who know Senegal, I don't know where it is now, Wakam. Wakam used to be the logistics um, department of for the uh, uh, military. But in, in Wakam, I've realized now that area is built up. I'm not sure whether the, uh, uh, there's, there's a word they used to call the area. That's where people go to learn to drive. Even driving is instructors have to go there because that area was, the infrastructure was built to teach people to drive away from the traffic. That's what, what Senegalese army was doing. That's why most of them, the time they, the time they, before they leave the army, some of them would be transferred to the logistics to learn to have skills, mechanic. And when they go to learn the skills, they don't only learn to drive, they learn them troubleshooting for vehicles and other safety things and other things to do. And, and so that when they go out there, they are very competent. These are the sort of things they should be talking about. The government should be looking at this. Now, you think that if we had that way professional Gambians, then we could find a way to give an advantage, they already have an advantage because they have a, a qualification from certified uh, institutions. But if they don't have a certificate, they don't have anything, all you have to do is driving license. And most of them are not motivated to be taxi drivers. Even their own brothers would not, they don't want to drive their own brother's vehicle. Their own brothers probably would want them to drive their vehicle so that the finances can be between them. But no, they don't want to do that because if it's not a professional job. Now, somebody, foreigner, they have been given that job. You think the Gambian that give it to the foreigner because probably he trusts that foreigner more than someone else. It's not because of he, he loves the foreigner because not the foreigner is fuller. Uh, that's why he gave him a job. But I tell you, go and find out. 80 to 90% of people who have vehicles giving it out, they are not happy. They are just struggling with it then why is it this important to the extent of a public officer going there to, uh, to, to raise some tribal sentiments? Let's move on. He continued. Again, it was Modu Jala first, now it's Momodua. Now, 
is King Kolido directly fixated with Fulas? What about the Niger? If he had said Momodi Diallo and say Femi something, or what about a Senegalese? Wolof, who is a taxi driver? What about a Malian? Who is a taxi driver? Who is not a fuller, a taxi driver? What about a Guinea Bissauian? Who is not a fuller, a taxi driver? No, he, he cannot see all this. But he can only see one tribe, one name. But to the extent here, he said there are many in Farafene and all these places because of what the density population of Fulas in those areas. Now he that again his mindset is pointed to Fulas. Not only that, and he went to say Momoduba, another Fula, and even emphasized that Momoduba Darasoma, he's not he's not a Gambian. Now he's saying that if you are Momoduba, you are not a Gambian. That in Darasoma, you are not a Gambian. How can that be true? How can is that not really attacking a tribe? It's not that you're not really pitting a tribe against other people. I'm not blaming him alone, because I start from the government, from from politicization of the elections and everything else. I talked about that. For from their campaign, I, I talk about that. From Adam Abara himself, but and, and everybody, I talk about that. That's why we should put this into context. I know someone, some of us are putting it into context, but the context is very narrow. It's all about the elections, and this is no. Let's move forward on that, and I even mean, wh where the main problem is is about this. We should not be really fixated about one tribe. It's let's look at it holistically and see where the problems are. Let's look at the solution. What government should have done? Momoduba cannot be a fool. I'm telling, sorry, Momoduba cannot be a Gambian. In in in, in Garrison, he is not born in the Gambia. <laughs> King Koli, probably you don't know history. Probably you don't know history. Before Gambia was called the Gambia, they were fools. And I tell you, to if even to 1965, go and ask the population of Gambia from 1965. You cannot tell the narrative, the history of the Gambia without fools. You cannot. There's a reason they say fools. When we have kings and queens. A prejudice, there's nothing to, to threaten any fuller to be uncomfortable to be in the Gambia or to call himself a Gambian. I'll tell you that. When it comes to wrongdoing, we call it as it is. But you cannot threaten anybody. And you cannot marginalize anybody. But we are not idiots to fall for that. I am not calling any fuller to think himself different. I'm not calling any fuller to go against any tribe or think any tribe is against him. No. King Kole is an individual. King Kole is part of a system. And that system, we have fullers, we have dollars, we have wolves, and everybody in it. That system is the is system that entrenched the sort of government we have so from Jawara on, on. This is what destroyed the PPP. This was what destroyed the PPP. We should not allow it. Today, they, they're doing it so that Maninka Mandinkas would jump up, up to go and support the government, thinking that the government now is, is, is supporting Mandinkas. But when it was about elections, Mandinkas in, in NPP in themselves are going against Mandinkas, calling them angry, calling them xenophobic, calling them everything. We are here. We were here. Yes, they did it with other fullers. And now one of those fullers is standing there celebrating that Engai Nako can be a minister. He is right to say that he can be a minister in the Barra's government, but we know that from the founding fathers, we have them. Go and find out who Jalo Union is. Go and look at any permanent Gambian family that does not have a mother who is not, who's not a fuller. Go and find out that. Be in Banjun, go and find out any permanent Gambian family in Banjun that doesn't have a mother or a father that's not fuller. Or grandmother that's not fuller. Go and go to go to Fuladu, go to go to Badibu, go to Kiang, go to every this thing. We should not allow this. We should not allow these people. Let us not move with the sentiments. They want to divide us further. That's not. They know. They, you see, we have to be careful. And I am saying this to the opposition and UDP for that matter. For opposition and UDP for that matter, be very careful. 
You know this government have done their assessment. Now what they're doing, they have different strategy. Now the police know that things are going down. And Gambians will come out. And they perceived the UDP would be the forefront of a political movement to confront them. Now they are using the word reconciliation. Now they are going using their uh, messengers to come and pitch us against, against each other so that we not pitch against the government. We have to think. We have to think. And those don't say that you were not one. They try to appease. You see, these people have programmed people to believe. And they want to even make the UDP, they, they attack the UDP so much on tribal grounds. They want the UDP to own up to be a Mandinka party or a Mandinka entity or to be defensive of anything Mandinka. Now they want to use that using King Koli. You think King Koli just said this by mistake? Where was King Koli? He said that he will fight this. He will go, uh, even if people want to go to Mali, you see how small-minded they, they are going to Mali for Marabu? They can go to Marabu, they can go to anything. He is ready to fight for this. Where was he when we were talking about the most important thing, undermining our democracy? Where is King Koli when, when the youths were, were three years later were attacked? Where was King Koli when, when, when demonstration and everything were attacked? He knows that everything was wrong. Police handed that he didn't know the law. He did not know the law. He's a coward. Go and find out what King Koli said at State House when they were planning this three years judgment strategy. Go and find out. Go and find, find out how many people King Koli reported to be UDP sympathizers uh, in the security forces. Because they just want to keep their place. This is a calculated thing. They know that the country is going to be very difficult to govern. Because of the price rises, because of the problems in the country, now they are doing what South Africa does. They're doing what Nigeria did. They're doing what Ghana did. To pitch the youths to concentrate among themselves, to concentrate with, with uh, 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 onto foreigners. The problem is not our the foreigners. The problem is not the foreigners. The problem is not the foreigners. I was here. I spoke against this. When, when, when Fulas were given, uh, and other foreigners, not only Fulas, other foreigners were given uh, voter cards. I went against that. And I was, I didn't come and tell people. Because I was not seeking attention for anybody to fight my call. I fought my call. People that inbox me, telling me I am shame to Fulas, I am this. I don't care. I am not. I am a Gambian. I see myself a Gambian. Comfortable to call myself a Gambian. Because I am not only a fuller. No. I happen to be a fuller. And part of what is not in fuller is, is greater what is fuller in me. That's why we have to be very careful. Let's, let's listen to... You see, that's another lie. That's another blunting lie. Okay, he said that he is he, he's going to sacrifice every, anything. And he said that um, Lua, I mean, the, it is the law that dictates this. And he said that uh, the, uh, the, the Gambians should give their vehicles. Is it the way, it, who, who are these people he's addressing? Are these people that own vehicles? He, is he addressing Gambians? He's addressing a mob. Because anybody can join this meeting. He did not go, he did not invite the union, Gambia Transport Union. He did not invite the interior ministry. He did not in, invite the local government ministry to discuss this as a poli, uh, for policy level. He went to an open place that any vagabond can, can come on and, and join. And those vagabonds can use it as a, a, a pretext. Because they want to loot something, let's just attack here and justify it. This is how, how South Africa happened. This is how Nigeria used to happen on others. Is, he is lying. He said there is no country that this is allowed. Yes, when any country you go, you have residents. 
private sector is open for you. The rest to determine how you participate in the private sector, you have the means and qualifications to do. The means and qualifications. You don't have to be a British citizen to drive a taxi. But you have to be a resident to drive a taxi. You can't be a tourist and do it. Eh? You have to have the driver license. If you want to drive a black car, a specific brand of vehicle, there's a criteria to do that. And to be a British is not one of them. To be a British is not one of them. He lied. Now he's saying that hit and run, now wanting to say hit and run is a, is a foreigner problem. He's a liar. We have seen what Gambian youths have been doing. How many uh, uh, ruthless driving, those, I mean, that, that youth that killed that, uh, these things, did they, where's the prosecution for that? We see them in the weekends, they go around doing that, that they are driving they see in the movies. Did we see the police stop that? How many people have been harmed in that? We saw the other time at Marina in Tonsolo. Where's the prosecution for that? Hit and run can be done by anybody. What about some of our uh, brothers and sisters that go out there and get drunk and drive from, from the nightclubs and kill people? Who has been prosecuted? Did they prosecute one person for that? Is that foreigners? Is that foreigners? You see, he has moved from fullers now to foreigners. This is very dangerous. Who gives them license? Who gives them license? Who could check? Well, he would be taking bribes like nobody. He takes bribes like nobody. And what most leaders, what they do? They put, how many checkpoints? And look at all the dangerous uh, accidents happen with, with overloading. Imagine that a, a, a truck will load at the ports. The failure force it at, at the ports. When the fa failure force is at the ports, when an overloaded truck it that's not stable to move from the ports, I mean outside the ports and come to, uh, to drive to Banyun, come to Dublin Bridge, there's a che police checkpoint. Move from there, go come to um, Joshuang, there's a checkpoint. Move to up to Bilkama, how many checkpoints? How many checkpoints? And and that's not enough. And until they have an accident, they don't stop. Do you know why they don't stop them? Because of they are taking bribes. Because they are taking bribes. He, that's his responsibility. He is not telling us uh, why that is happening. He should be charged for that. He failed. How come that is happening? Huh? How many how many burglaries we see happening and they are going through to, to, to traffic? Go and find out how many how many checkpoints you have in the night. How comes all these burglars are using vehicles and they are not being caught? This is what our problems are. Where are the police? Where are the resources being put on the police? How many recruitment are they doing? No, but they are centered on this thing. Go and look at how many PIU they put on standby. Standby for what? Standby against who? Standby against who? Huh? Now you look at this. You, you look at these issues they need to deal with, they are not dealing with this thing. You, just, you see the problem in Kunkuja Mariama? Let the Christians just go and say that they're going to do a peaceful vigilant, vigil. And you see that they will bring tons of PIUs to confront them. But with all the things going on, you don't see a PIU tackling it. You don't see a PIU tackling it. This is where we should be concentrating on. Let me continue. You see, this is the problem when you take this misfit and give them these positions. 
Because of Yajame time, anybody can, you just, they, these are the same people. That's why they survived Yajame. They are the same people that went and lied and plotted and everything. Now they are at the higher echelon of power. Because that's, that's how, all their qualifications. Go and tell me which police academy he, he attended. What traffic academy, when, where did he go and, and, and acquire the knowledge to run the traffic division? What does he know about traffic? Traffic is not about hey, uh, Najang, Tajang, just left and right. No. Look at this guy, what he's just said. And I said this. Now he's lying again or saying a thing as or, uh, at Buffalo Zone. Why did the vehicle go to Buffalo Zone? Where did the vehicle load? How many checkpoints did the vehicle go past? Now, because of that incident, that he said that when the accident happened, the driver ran away and went to Binjol. He was caught at Binjol. But in order to get him, he had to seize the, seize the, uh, the, 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 the merchandise. And he said that because, uh, and they said, uh, you all, oh, you breaking the law. Uh, he said, I know the law. Look at that. Look at him. Why do you need to see the vehicle? Every vehicle have a registration number. And, and registration number tell you the owner of the vehicle. And from the registration number, go to the owner of the vehicle who was driving the vehicle at the time. That's all. But he is trying to make it as sophisticated as it is. Oh, I have to seize this thing. And when I seize it, they have to come to me. Why do you have to seize it for them to come to you? You see, this is the problem we have. People like this think that they have knowledge. Why do you need to seize the merchandise to know the owner? Run the, run the registration number. Run the registration number. When you run the registration number, you know the owner. That's all. Why he's trying to make up to be something else. Where was he? Where was he when, when, when all these things are happening? This is where we should be very careful. Yeah. Now, now people who have listened to this and went and commented, I think, I hope when you listen to this program, you think further down. This is not about fullers. Yes, if they are pitching, this is more than that. They are getting themselves ready. Now, one strategy is go and go and um, uh, undermine the grassroots of the UDP. Go and get your guys to go around to 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 to, to magnetize uh, to try to break the crystallized unity of the UDP by selling them reconciliation. Now, with that reconciliation, we if the UDP executive and leaders have entertained that, give jobs to some of them. When you give jobs to some of them, the grassroots will be so angry. That you see, now we are betrayed, they're going for the gravy train. They don't want UDP to hold on to ask for accountability for elections, uh, uh, IEC, regular these things. These are the issues that look, there's what they have done personal. If they have done personal or anything to UDP, let them address that. But UDP as an institution, as an opposition party, they cannot address the UDP alone. There's nothing like a reconciliation in this. Let deal with the issues, the agendas. Let the let the government bring out the constitution and every political party to act on the constitution as it is. Let the government bring out so that we can put back credibility to the IEC, the reform the IEC. These are the agendas we should ask. They don't want that. They want to distract you guys uh, on reconciliation. Now they know that there's something imminent. They cannot deliver electricity. They cannot de deliver water. We the billions they have uh, spent on Narek and other areas. Uh, the raining season is coming. The uh, problem with supplies of grains and other things are coming. They cannot control the prices. Now what they want to do is di distract us. To pitch us. Now they send a, a cowye, cowye like King Koli. You, you didn't hear this from the spokesperson. You didn't hear it from the IG. The IG is going wrong. The IG is going wrong. Why the IG is not telling us this? But they went and started to take the, uh, the tuk tuk. They started the tuk tuk, uh, three wheel vehicles. And next minute they started to say uh, these things. Look, how many businesses are there dominated by foreigners? Indians and other people. And Gambians are, red, are, are in that space already. It takes nothing for uh, someone to come from UK, being any citizen, or Nigeria, and go to Gambia and open a big bar. And do all, every business. What, what? What is more serious than that? Money laundering, drug trafficking, uh, uh, money laundering. They don't. They don't care about that. 
These are the issues we have problem with. But they're pitching us they against each other. And UDP is a target to this. UDP is a target to this. The language they're speaking is to try to entice. Entice. And you can see from the response. From this, they say, oh, it's true, foreigners, this, because they know that uh, many people in the UDP are angry for, for, for what happened in the elections. Now they want to divert that to bring it into about driving. This is so cheap for us to do to, 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 to it. This is very cheap for us to do it. I, I've just said what I said. There's nobody who is representing any tribe in the country. They are representing themselves and they're representing a system. Be the Mandinka, be the Fula, be the Wolof, they are not representing us. They are representing a system and if you're part of that system. They have people that pay to insult, they have people to pay to divide, they have people pay to do other things, P pay to go and mobilize foreigners, they have people to enable, the Alcalos got paid salaries. When I raised that here, the reason Musa Drame called me out at State House, said that Suleiman Ben Swale lied, said that I, I asked for a list of Alcalos so that we can prepare to pay them. He said I lied, but it didn't, it didn't happen. After a few weeks, they have to do it. What make him angry is how did I know at that level of, of discussion that that's what they're planning. And now why did they pay this Alcalo? So that they can comply. And now we see the results in the parliamentary elections. Now we see the results in the parliamentary elections when vigilantism was, was excited. And in order for they have to, them to have control, what were they doing? Anyone who is vigilant, they call you a xenophobic. Anyone vigilant, they call you a tribalist. Now, they are the one being vigilant now. And they want people who were vigilant for good reasons now to come and support them. That's why I said those people who were vigilant, and most of them part of UDP, be very careful not to be used as a cannon fodder for, for these criminals. Those who were genuinely vigilant because of foreigners were undermining our democracy, be careful. They don't. They want to distract you to, to to go after foreigners. We have seen this in South Africa. We have seen this in Nigeria. We have seen this in Ghana. If government want to empower Gambians, it's going to be on policy, not rhetoric. Not going to banter bars, having people sit down. When government want to discuss policy, they want to need to sit down with stakeholders. The the, the drivers have a drivers union. The Minister of Interior, Minister of Local Government, and all these ministries can sit down and devise a, a policy. They, they, if they want to empower Gambians, they can look at ways and means to empower Gambians. If they think that driving is a lucrative or an important part, they can find how to get drive Gambians to be professional and get the job to be attractive. Regulated so that Gambians will want to do it and it will be the same. But something which is free enterprise. We live in a free economy. That you want to dictate a Gambian who to give to a vehicle? No. The, the Gambians already, look, if the Gambian think that his brother would do a better job with his vehicle, he's going to give it to him. I tell you, the Gambian is giving a vehicle to a foreigner, not even a better job, uh, uh, because of his better, he's going to go do a better job than the other one. I tell you, if he knew that his own brother is going to give him more returns and take care of his vehicle, he's going to give it to him. That Gambian giving it to a foreigner is not giving it to a foreigner because he loves the foreigner and hates the Gambian. Then King Cole cannot go and sell that. And Gambians who just jump on sentiments to support here, King Cole is right, he's right, we need to protect our country. We cannot protect our country by, by, by rhetoric. We control our country by policy, by making sure we have structures, we have systems, we put capacity in our youths. Look at the GTTI. Uh, did, what, what did we invest in the GTTI? Huh? Not only that, when, even when, when these people are graduates, what do we do, what do, we do to make sure they, 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 they get to their professions? What do we do? Just example of the Gambians who take up farming. Gambians are living the diasporas is as ingenious, as tech developers and others. They are the farmers today. They're becoming farmers. Even the government should have looked at the policy, how to attract youths to agriculture. Look at what Treasure Warrior is doing. In, in a country like this, there will be special grants from government because she's have proven that he, she have proven that she's capable. 
special grants given to people that are, are organizing women, organizing youths. How many Gambian youths have left the diaspora or in the Gambia who are now uh, animal husbandry farmers? Do we, what, what, did, what did the government do? Did, did the government try to create an enabling environment, try to make sure they have access to what they need? Subsidize the feed to feed these animals. Subsidize the feed for poultry. Subsidize the feed for uh, this thing so that we, they can produce more. Senegal is doing that. There are special programs. That's why Senegal can now produce enough uh, sip or ram, you call them, and what, and selling it to the Gambia, exporting it to the Gambia. There should be a policy, directive. There should be something done. But it's not to pitch us against each other. Thank you very much, guys. Have a good day.